We spent a lot of the last few videos discussing parallelograms and different types of shapes that fit into the parallelogram family. So the rhombus, the rectangle, and the square were all examples of different types of parallelograms. And in this lesson, I want to talk about a new type of family of shapes, and that is the trapezium. So here I have two different examples of trapeziums. And a trapezium is a quadrilateral. We can see that it has four line segments that are joined together, so it is a quadrilateral. But a trapezium is not a parallelogram. A trapezium is only going to have one pair of opposite sides parallel to one another. The other two sides are not parallel. So we can see in this trapezium, we have these two opposite sides which are parallel. These two sides are not parallel. Over here, these two sides are parallel to one another and the other two sides are not parallel. So a trapezium is only going to have one pair of opposite sides that are parallel, and that is what is going to differentiate it from a parallelogram, which has both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Now we're going to have two different types of trapeziums, or as other people may say it, a trapezoid. Both are correct. So the first type of trapezium we have is this first one over here, which is known as an isosceles trapezium. And an isosceles trapezium is going to have the non-parallel sides of equal length. So this side is congruent to this side. They are going to be equal in length. And you may have come across the word isosceles before when referring to triangles. An isosceles triangle is a triangle that has two sides of equal length. So that's one thing that you can use to remember that an isosceles trapezium is going to have the non-parallel sides of equal length. So these are our two non-parallel sides and they are equal in length. Then our other type of trapezium is known as the scalene trapezium. So that is the scalene trapezium that we have over here. And a scalene trapezium is going to be a trapezium in which each side has a different length. So none of the sides are equal. And again, we have the scalene triangle in which all of the sides have different lengths. So you can use that to remember that a scalene trapezium, the sides will not be equal. So in summary, in order to call a shape a trapezium in general, it is only going to have one pair of opposite sides parallel. So we can see this side is parallel to this side in this trapezium, and this side is parallel to this side in this trapezium, but the other two sides are not parallel. So we know in an isosceles trapezium, our non-parallel sides are equal in length. That is going to be our first property of an isosceles trapezium. The second property is that our adjacent angles are going to be equal. And what that means is this angle is going to be equal to this angle, and this angle is going to be equal to this angle. These are adjacent angles, and adjacent angles are going to be congruent in an isosceles trapezium. The third property of an isosceles trapezium is going to be that the diagonals are equal. So if we were to put in two diagonals in this isosceles trapezium, this would be our first diagonal and this would be our second diagonal. These two diagonals are going to be congruent. They are equal in length. And in a scalene trapezium, our non-parallel sides are not equal. Our adjacent angles are not equal and our diagonals are not equal. So that is how we are going to differentiate between our different types of trapeziums. And what I want to do now is just take a second to prove that in an isosceles trapezium, the diagonals are equal. What I want to do is break up this isosceles trapezium into two different triangles. And to do that, I'm going to start by labeling this A, B, C, and D, and this point E. So if we were to make up a triangle that was composed of A, C, B, we would get something that looks like this. This is A, over here we have C, and over here we have B. This is just this part of this isosceles trapezium, making a triangle from C, A, B. And in the top left corner, we have that red angle. And for point C and point B, this red diagonal is going to split up those two angles. So these two angles are not going to be the same as what they are in here, just because the diagonal splits them up. 
So this is the only angle we know for sure. We know that this side length is going to have this value. And let's just take a second to label these two sides. So let's label this side as this, and we can label this side as this. So over here is that side. This is the same side as this. So now we have one triangle that is going to be made up of our first diagonal. And I now want to draw out another triangle that has this diagonal. So it's going to be made up of A, B, D. And that triangle is going to look like this. Here we have side A, B. Then we have B, D. And we have our second diagonal. So that is A, B, and that is D. And if we put in what we know, we know that AB, again, is the same value as this AB. We know that BD is going to have the same value as AC, because these are the non-parallel sides of our trapezium, which are equal in length. And we know that this angle B, since we are not including the second diagonal in this diagram, this angle B is going to be that red angle, which is the same angle as angle A. So if we look at these two triangles, which we've just made by deconstructing this isosceles trapezium into a triangle here and a triangle here, what we can see is that, well, angle A is going to be equal to angle B. We have side AB, which is a common side between our two triangles. They both have the same side, so of course that side is going to have the same length. And we have AC, which is the same length as BD. These were our two non-parallel sides in our isosceles trapezium, which are congruent. We can see that this side is congruent to this side. One thing that should immediately be jumping out to you is by side angle, side congruency, these two triangles are congruent. So triangle CAB is congruent to triangle DBA by side angle side congruency. And that says that if we have two sides and the included angle that's formed between those two sides, which are equal between two triangles, the triangles are congruent. So we know that these two triangles are congruent. And that means that all of their corresponding sides and all of their corresponding angles are equal. And by that token, CB has to be congruent to AD because these are corresponding sides between our two triangles. So we know that CB is going to be equal to AD because they are corresponding sides of our congruent triangles. So what we have just proven is that these two diagonals are going to be equal in an isosceles trapezium. And that is going to summarize everything you need to know about the trapezium family or the trapezoid family.